the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is in our I would like to speak today about the human body. We speak very often about the soul, the spiritual life, but we speak very seldom about the body itself. And in making these reflections, I am indebted to this little book, which is called Theology of the Body by Jean-Claude Larcher, uh, which is an extraordinary book, also the first book I ever read about the body. Um, and I'll get a couple of copies and put them in the bookstore. We'll see how many years they stay there before any, I mean, we may have to move them eventually if the dust gets to, to be too high on them, but um, the book begins with this amazing fact that um, we don't really remember from all the times that we have heard it and read in Genesis that when God created man, he created the body first. And he created it out of the dust of the earth. And then he breathed the soul into it. So the body was here first, and it has therefore a dignity that is uh, unassailable. It is the soul that takes up its place in the body. And the body is the resting place for the soul. The soul and the body are uniquely made for each other. And we can't have a human being with just a body or with just a soul. The two are essential for each other. And when we know that when we die, that the separation that we experience is not according to God's plan. It's according to Adam's plan. And that is a great uh, sorrow for us. But it is not a sorrow that has not been resolved. The body, therefore, has an extremely important role to play in the spiritual life. This is another thing that we pay very, very little attention to, if any attention is ever paid to the idea that the body has a role to play in the spiritual life. Instead, we take a kind of platonic view of the body. And in that way, we consider the flesh, we consider the material world to be less important or perhaps we consider it to be less real than the spiritual world. The thing that's most important in our minds is the spiritual life of the Christian, and the physical life of the Christian is denigrated. In our practical li living, this manifests itself in many ways in which we disregard the body. We treat it poorly. We play fast and loose with the body. We have forgotten St. Paul's words to the Corinthians, which is, remember that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We also neglect to consider the fact that as Orthodox Christians, we are commanded to take and to eat the body and blood of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the part of our Christian life in which the body plays the most important role as a repository for these Eucharistic gifts, giving them a place, a locus, a physicality in this world that otherwise they would not have. And we receive this deified bread and wine into our bodies. And then we go back to our lives, as it were, as if this never happened, completely 
ignorant of the reality that has occurred and continues to occur, that God sanctifies our bodies by taking up his physical residence in them, that each of us is like a tabernacle, but we do not treat each other like we are tabernacles of the Holy Spirit, like we are living presences of God in the world. We instead treat our bodies as if they were toys. We play with them. We expect our bodies to entertain us. This manifests itself primarily through our use of the body in eating, in drinking, in lust. We give way to lustful thoughts and actions which defile the body, which fail to use it in accordance with its purpose, being united to the soul as a place in which God's deified body can manifest itself in the world. And because we play fast and loose with the body, we neglect its role in our spiritual life. And it cannot work, it cannot contribute to our deification if it is basically a discard, if it is something that is left behind. As Christians, then, we must take an active approach to our body. We must be engaged with our body, not passive, not just treating it as an instrument of pleasure or entertainment. Responsible living in a body means that we have to take the body into account when we do things. When we do things with our body, we should be asking ourselves the question, Will this help me to become a saint? Will this help me later when it is time for me to pray and my body may not be ready to pray? My body may be ready at that point to collapse or to sleep because I have not prepared my body. I have not used my body in a way which is consistent with its purpose of deification. I have used my body as a toy. The things that we need to do with our body are pretty simple, though. Things like hydration. I can't tell you how often I hear stories about people who are rushed to the hospital. I heard one just yesterday. And they think they are on the edge of, of the verge of death when it turns out they just got dehydrated. They just need to drink a little water. Hydration, nutrition, exercise, sleep. These are such fundamental things for our body's well-being. And many of us neglect them. We also need to consider that our body has a role to play in prayer. We need to put our body into a place, a disposition of quiet, of stillness, of peacefulness. When we want to pray, we have to turn off the noise that pervades our lives. Here, hear that one? Did you hear that one? <laughs> we need to turn that off when we want to pray. Precisely, uh, thank you, whoever had the <laughs> phone. That was not on silence. Some churches, they have a sign at the door with a, a round circle with a line through it and a cell phone there. We don't need to do that, but, <clears throat> but it's a good point. We need to silence our phones our televisions, our radios, our computers, all of those things that physically come in between us 
and the absolute. So our bodies have a very important role to play in the spiritual life. And when we attain to sanctity, we see in the lives of the saints, we see countless examples of this transparency, this translucency that they attain. Their bodies radiate the uncreated light of the Lord of glory. They become weightless. And there are many accounts of saints who have walked on water and levitated, who are clairvoyant. These features, these characteristics are not important in themselves, but they are mere signs of the fact that the body in theosis, in divinization, the body itself is changed. It becomes a new body. It becomes filled with the grace of God. It manifests this reality. And the bodies of the saints continue to do that even after their repose. And that is what we call relics. Those things that are constant reminders and signposts of the kingdom of God, which we reverence because the material world has received this grace. It has been sanctified and it retains that sanctification. It's easy to venerate a relic and we should. We have one here of Saint Herman. We should, but that is not the end of the story. We need to see and struggle for the same level, the same degree of sanctification in our own bodies as we see in the lives of the saints. This should be our hope and our goal, and we should work towards it. Instead of dispensing our bodies as some kind of extra that are not spiritual, we should discover and recover the unity of soul and body in the human person who is fully saved. The whole body is immersed in the font. The whole body receives the gifts and yet we neglect it continuously over and over and over again. If we would be responsible for the use of our body in a spiritual way for a spiritual purpose, the purpose of new life in Christ, our bodies would be resplendent, they would be youthful, they would have vigor. And yes, the body is also the place in which we struggle with illness, with old age, and with death. And these are painful and difficult things for us to come to terms with. And yet, if our body has been sanctified, if our body has been refreshed and renewed, if our body plays its role in prayer, then as we confront these difficulties, we are filled with God's grace and we can confront them and use them as a means of further sanctification and purification of both soul and body. Having a body is an incredible gift. It is an incredible honor. And the body itself is a seat of dignity but only if we use it that way, only if we understand that we must approach our body with reverence, something that God has created as holy, but something that we must also use as holy. Amen.